We're going to continue on with a lot of good basics here in Taiji Chuan in Deconstructing Yang Style. In our previous video about breathing, we talked about the uh, posture that we're going to have for this, the structure of the actual physical body as we go, and this is that thing. So this and the breathing are really going to go hand in hand together because each is going to definitely help the other. And if people don't do anything else but breathe in a way that's healthy and are able to have healthy, correct posture, things are going to be super much, much better in a lot of ways for a lot of people. Now, I want to get out of the mindset of, again, you know, late 20th, early 21st century mindset of what a lot of people think posture should be. This is going to be uh, somewhat of a problem for some people because even if they think they have good posture it might be still posture that causes stress on the body. Remember internals are we want to make the body work as one whole unit as efficiently as we possibly can make it work. Now we're taught and especially you know if, if you're teaching in a gym you got people who are used to to certain things when you're lifting weights or doing external gong fu, the, the idea is you're kind of isolating something. You know, you might think it was like, you want your arm to be really powerful. Well, your arm is going to have a lot of force. Your whole body is going to have power. You know, if I'm doing curls, doing this isn't super great because even unless you know how to cheat the lift correctly and you're doing that kind of only at the end when you're kind of trying to put a couple more reps in, you're not doing any work because you're supposed to isolate a certain place. In internals, we don't want to isolate a certain place. The whole body wants to work together as one thing. Now, especially as, you know, someone you know, uh, assigned male at birth and presenting male and all that good stuff with me, you know, weird boy, for the most part. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm, I'm not going to get into that conversation right now. Anyway, so yeah, uh, what are we taught to do? Stick your chest out, shoulders back, head up. This is, you know, that's, oh God, this hurts. This is, this is like the ideal thing, you know? And I did this for a long time too, because you kind of get that, that puffy bird chest, what, what, what sort of thing going on. You know, it's supposed to make yourself look bigger, look tougher. Well, all this is, I mean, at least from my elbows, this entire upper body is just stress. It's just tense. You know, I'm coming back like this. I'm pulling the shoulders back. So the stress and tension back in the back too. Guess what? A ton of stuff gets stored back there in the back and in the neck and in the shoulders. And you're bringing all this bad stuff up into the heart and, and lung area and even into the brain. And since it's tension, you're, you're damming it off there and holding it in. Now, what happens to water when it gets dammed off and there's no movement? It becomes brackish. It becomes diseased. It becomes no good to anyone or anything that, you know, it, really to, to kind of live in, except maybe like algae and scum or something like that. We don't want that in our bodies. I mean, apart, I mean, the spirulina is kind of an algae and that's kind of healthy, but that way, anyway, but we don't want that to sort of form in our bodies. So, uh, like I gave a, a sort of, uh, a bit about with the breathing, it's going to be the same thing here. There's going to take time for our bodies and our, 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 the way we pay attention to things to reestablish this in a healthier way since we've been not only taught but conditioned and been practicing some of these maybe slightly more unhealthy uh, practices for fill in the blank for however old you are. So again, so just know that this is going to be maybe a little bit hard and it's going to take some time to realistically and consistently be able to reform in a way that's correct to this art and modality. Okay? It's not something people are going to pick up overnight. It's going to be something that's going to take a long time to adjust. And even after 22 years, you're still going to be making adjustments. You're tired, something hurts you know, maybe you are getting like a little kind of about something, you know, you know, something like that's coming up, panic attack, 
maybe you're ill, and these other things. A lot of stuff goes into the body in a constant, constant sort of thing. I mean, think about it. We're, we're taking in information from uh, seven senses, you know, the five we know of, taste, touch, smell, hearing, sight, as well as the proprioception, which is your, your body in space, and the vestibular sense, which is like your balance. So these other senses, too, from, understand, from what I understand, in the last few years, those have been added to the list of the five to make seven. Even if you are talking about psychic-y stuff, too. Uh, we're constantly taking this information, but we only sort of pay attention to a very small proportion of it. So we're always, always, always. So that's why our like dreams are weird, and our subconscious, and that shadow work, and that dealing with all that other sort of dark side stuff needs to happen because all that is just building up. So we need to, to work it out, and sometimes that can be built up into the body as well. I've had it with myself where I, when I've been able to relax something or let something go feel also either just start la I'm usually I laugh usually when there's a release sometimes cry sometimes memories start coming up that you haven't thought about and sometimes they're very vivid I know other people we've done re like these relaxing exercises with start crying um, you, you get like a release and oh god free Daniels that feels good but I mean this is this uh, think about how you come out of like a massage or sensory deprivation, or acupuncture, or a chiropractor, or something like that. Why do you want to put yourselves back into the the way of holding yourself and holding your mind and holding your body that created the stress that necessitated you have to go to these places to begin with? You don't. Now, what we want to do is we want to be able to utilize the body as a whole unit in the way that is most efficient as possible. The way that's going to be most efficient as possible on a very basic level is within the the sort of skeletal architecture. And I say architecture because you want your buildings to be able to support weight and support people going in and out of them. Now I don't really know if people want people going in and out of them sort of thing. I mean we don't I don't have office space for rent or anything but you want yourself to be sturdy and you want yourself to be able to handle a stiff wind if you happen to be out in one or, or just deal with whatever stuff so I, I kinda think of it almost like architecture and that has to work a certain way now again some of this is best able so when I talk about angles either here or when we're talking about stepping or the arms or anything anything I'm talking about angles that's sort of an easy reference ideal thing to do not everyone's going to be perfectly dead on. If I say put your foot at 45 degrees, not everyone's going to have to be at a dead on 45 degree angle for it to be correct. You might have to go out or in a little bit. I have to kind of go out a little bit, and this is what I mean. I'll kind of show this. We're going to talk about especially feet being parallel. Now, when I have my feet parallel that feels correct for me, my feet don't look particularly parallel right now, do they? That's because they're kind of not because I'm pigeon-toed. So if my feet looked parallel in the shoes, I'm, I'm going to exaggerate here, so my shoes now look like they're parallel, I'm having a problem where my knees aren't really over my feet correctly, and my feet are actually really pointing like that. So unless, again, unless you've got some sort of like Wing Chun thing, it's actually teaching you to actually stand like this, um, and then that's a whole different realm of, of instruction thing that, that's outside the purview of what we're talking about right now. What we're talking about right now is the basic structure for internals. Taiji, Xingyi, Bagua, your, your Qigong, and even just day-to-day -day standing in line, walking around, all this other stuff too. So we're going to build from the bottom up. So you want your feet about parallel. And this is just a way to start feeling the body and feeling where everything should be at. So you want your feet about parallel. And when you bend your knees, I'm not talking about hinging. We're not going to hinge. We're going to keep the hips where they are and bend the knees straight down. You want your knees to track out over the feet. So it's kind of hard with the Kung Fu pants. Basically, my knees and my feet are lined up. And both, both of them. So what I can feel is you're always going to have some of that time under tension in like the quadriceps and things like that. Your body is never going to be relaxed enough where you're never going to have to use muscles. 
because that's not the way a human body works. You want to be empty, as empty as you can of tension, but you still have intent, you still have energy. But your the muscle has to work. That's just the way the human body is. So you're going to have some time under tension with this, but the idea is you want to feel without any hindrance your body weight sitting through your heels and through into the ground. If the knee and foot alignment is slightly off, like it's it's here for instance, with my this is my right leg, it's off. What I'm feeling is since my knee is actually kind of on the inside of my foot, what I'm feeling is that instep on the inside of my foot, and my, my foot, I feel my foot rolling like this instead of flat down, and my weight is not evenly distributed along this sort of side of my foot, and I'm feeling a lot of tension on that inside part of my knee. So what happens, like this part of my knee and that part of my foot is getting a little bit more worn down than it would be otherwise. And now even like um, personal trainers and physical fitness people will talk, will talk about energy leaks if your lift is inappropriate. You know, if your, your back isn't straight enough and you're kind of turtling a little bit for your deadlifts, you're, you might cause yourself a lot of pain and problems because you've got energy leaks as opposed to having your, your posture correct and lifting correctly. So the same thing is going to be with our postures. There's like energy leaks. Now it could be, again, in the idea of what a physical trainer might talk about in terms of, of sort of waste of effort and energy in your lift. You could also think of it in terms of an electrical term, as in things aren't wired properly or there's a fray. You can also think of it in terms of just actual like chi energy, just not being able to run correctly because stuff's blowing out in a weird way. So at a base, feet about parallel here and shoulder width. And this shoulder width idea is going to come up a lot when we're talking about our stances in Yang style Taiji. So just to start feeling it here, feet about shoulder width apart. Try and make your feet parallel. And bend your knees, keeping your back straight, tailbone tucked in. Bend your knees a little bit. Doesn't have to be super squatty or anything. And we want to sink down. Not squat or hinge, sink straight down. And knees and feet lined up. And again, feeling that weight through the legs and into the feet. Again, you're, you might, you're probably going to feel some of that wear in especially the quadriceps. But there shouldn't be any pain. There shouldn't be any, any, any sort of thing one way or the other, either on the inside or the outside of the foot or the knee. And straight down through the heels into the ground. This is going to help with things like neutralizing thing. I have a friend of mine who's trained with me and has a, a wrestler background, bigger and stronger than me. And we've done push hand stuff. And he was like, man, it almost feels like you're six feet into the ground when we're doing push hands. And we were in second story of a building because the rooting was appropriate. Again, there's that word. We've talked about rooting a little bit with the breathing. When the body is correct, again, and we're going to talk about this in, in, in other parts too. Um, so we're, we're going to build as we go, but I'm kind of introducing a little bit now. When the body is correct, you're not going to fight force with force. But there might be times where the force is coming in and you can neutralize. You cannot neutralize correctly if your body has leakages and out of whack. And I've had to do this, you know, where you're standing here, you know, sitting in here and getting pushed on, pushed on, pushed on, people bigger and stronger. And if I tried to fight them with it, I would have gotten bowled over, probably hurt something on top of that too. But I'm able to almost ground their energy in electrical fashion through my body, out through my feet, and out into the ground. And that helps you be able to root. That helps you be able to neutralize. When there's stories of Yang Cheng Fu who's actually able to play uh, push hands from a chair, he was able to feel his body and his energy root through the legs of the chair as well as his legs as he was connected to the chair and to the ground. Now, 
I know from my own personal experience. When we start having these alignments, especially the alignments from the feet through the knees and the hips and lower back, uh, I was harping on this before, and then now we're in 2021, six years ago now, and this is July 2021 at the, at the time of recording, so six years ago this month, um, I had a combination of a bunch of back stuff all pop at once. Uh, the sort of congenital problems and weakness I had in my in my lower in my uh, sort of lumbar and sacral area of my back that I didn't really know was there because it uh, kind of wore down. The um, sciatic and knee problems that I've had my whole life, which uh, I knew were congenital, and the knees I thought were were based on being a bouncy boy off of things as well as you know several years of martial arts and and then several years of of having to be in you know restraint situations and stuff like that all culminated in a nice wonderful moment uh, and I can feel my sciatic kind of going it's usually my right side but this is my left side it felt a little weird so I was actually sparring I was like I must keep this guy off of me keep this guy off of me through a kick and the, the kick was thrown well what happened it was just what was going on in that lumbar area hot knife hot <coughs> excuse me I'm a little dry you know hot lightsaber right through my back sliced down my leg is what it felt like and I'm like great I pinched a nerve I pinched my sciatic myriad times before used to pinch nerves up in here all the time carpal tunnel I know what a n nerve pinch feels like Okay, give me a couple of days, I'll be good. Now, this is when I was also working day treatment, so it was about the maybe halfway through the first week of our six week summer. A couple of days go by, it's not feeling like it usually would, where it hurts, 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 and then slowly subsides. It's getting worse, it's getting worse, it's getting worse and worse, and it's radiating in ways I've never felt before. At the time, it has since since been subsumed. Uh, at the time, it began to be the worst pain I'd ever felt in my life. Comes to find out that apparently on my spine between L5 and S1, I have osteoarthritis, uh, a degenerative disc, and spurring. So I have bone spurs on my spine. Awesome. Uh, so, yeah, all those things, the congenital stuff, the nature and the nurture, uh, the genetic and the epigenetic came together to a perfect storm of a lot of freaking pain not only a lot of pain but pretty much most of this leg from about maybe here down was numb the most I could feel a lot of it was kind of pins and needles it was numb for months now I still was able to train I still was able to teach I still was able to perform my functions when uh, work started up again and my leg was still numb was still and I still had pain in the back and radiating down the legs too I was still able to do all that and one of the reasons why not only because I built up that area over many years of training you know the, the Kung Fu stuff every day's leg day but because I had practiced enough of the alignments that I could trust when I play here without having looked down all the time that I could trust that I had programmed myself that this was still being correct and it was able to help me heal from that faster and in a in a more efficient fashion um, so then you know I was able to get some some of my flexibility back you know it happened uh, you know after 35 so <laughs> it kind of was uh, not great that I couldn't keep up with things for several months in the way I would want to I lost a little bit of some of my flexibility uh, in certain certain aspects I could still do some of my low stances the way I would before but um, some stuff I can't I just really can't do anymore that's okay uh, but we had it but I was still able to to do that and still able to recover faster than thought able but also without having to have looking down I was able to stay stable. I was able to, to walk, to train, and do all this, and to work, and do all this other stuff because my alignments were correct. So that that made it uh, made my students kind of go, "Oh, great! He's never going to shut up about our alignments now." 
but this is this is one of the, the things that it helps for. So we have our feet and our knees lined up. Now the hips, like we talked about before. If you're doing deadlifts or squats, you want that hinge. That hinge is good because that's what you're working out. You know, you get your deadlifts, you want that hinge to come up. You're working on that, that posterior chain. Cool. No good for internals because when we do this, we, we now have at least three things. We have the torso and upper body, and we have each leg. And each leg is probably, if, if we're kind of in that broken state here, uh, was it transverse abdominus, I think, comes along this way, that pelvic girdle, transverse abdominus, if we're in a broken state there, the legs aren't being used as one unit. So we're now three things instead of one contiguous unit, up and down, left, right, center, sideways, inside and out, all kind of one thing. If we're going to sink, we're going to sink straight down. We're not going to hinge. The tailbone and hips push under. So my shoulders and my hips are lined up, like my shoulders are sitting on top of my hips. We want our upper body to sit on our lower body. This is one of the things that you can kind of think of like a, like a weeble wobble. You want to be heavier on the bottom than on the top but we want to sink and sit on it. So instead of squatting, think of sitting on a stool or a bench. Back nice and straight. Leaning's no good. Leaning back's no good. Center of gravity comes up here and fall over. Leaning forward's no good. Center of gravity comes up here, fall over, no good. Sink, center of gravity stays here in the lower dantian, which is where we want it to be. If we have an opponent, even at equal height, you got to sink in order to get your center of gravity under theirs to be able to function in, in you know, if you're trying to throw or take down or, or get push hands and uproot or any of that other stuff with it too. So, in order to also help the shoulders and the hips line up and keep everything in one unit, uh, the crown of the head and the perineum or perineum it's that, that lowest spot on your torso that is between the genitals and the anus. Those are also lined up. That's the, and that's really what the real center line is. So if you hear center line in, in either talking about Tai Chi, we're talking about uh, now Peng Jing or the ward off energy or anything. It's not just, you know, if I draw between my eyebrows and down my nose and past my sternum and navel. It's not your real center line. Your real center line is this, you know, if you were to kind of drive a spike from through the top of your head and go straight down, it comes out the perineum or perineum. That's the, the true axle that your upper body is rotating around. That's your true center line. I believe it's called the Hara line, H-A-R-A, if we're talking about chakras. I forget what's well, supposed to be the Chinese name for it. I have it in a book. I saw it when I read the book, and I'll be darned if I could ever find it again. <laughs> I went through the book a couple of times. I've never found the word again. It's a little frustrating. It's almost like I had some sort of weird other, other parallel dimension book for a split second, and then it's gone. But that is, if you think of your Dantians or chakras, almost like... Um, You know, you get you know your string of beads or something like that. If they're held straight, perfectly straight, and your chakras or dantians are doo -doo 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 down on a line, that's the line, that's the string of this that it's holding on to. That hotter line. That we want to stay and remain straight. You go to hinge, you've changed now the the way the hotter line, that center line, is is lining up in the body. So we, excuse me, we want that straight. One of the ways we're going to do that is think of, think of your, your skeleton in your body like those biology skeletons you've got in, in like science labs and stuff, and you've got a hook right on the very tippy top crown of your head. It's really easy to see my tippy top crown of the head because I got this sort of mummy ramp 
that goes up this way. I don't have a kind of round head. I got this extra little thing, kind of this little alien crystal skull thing going on here. But so the very top of that, pull up, pull up, and that helps bring the the neck straight. And we tuck the chin in. So we don't want to be sitting very head up properly. It does not mean, oh, I'm so much nicer. Uh, hello, hello. That's not a head up. Head up is pulling the head up from the crown, keeping the chin tucked in. So when it's correct, instead of here, and we don't want to double down with the chin to the chest, we want the chin in and straight. So we have the cervical vertebrae here in the neck. So we have the cervical vertebrae, thoracic vertebrae, lumbar, and like your tailbone, and down here is sacral. Cervical vertebrae are being drawn up. Previous video we talked about raise the back and collapse the chest. This is what we're getting into when we're now talking about the posture. So we talked about this a little bit already. We're reiterating it and showing it within context more of the whole body. So this is the pulling up the head. This is lifting the back. As we lift and the, the cervical vertebrae opens up space between each vertebra and disc, we can start having that also come down into the, the thoracic vertebrae as well. Now when we have that lifted correctly and we sink correctly, the Chinese call this sort of inner, inner thigh uh, sort of groin area the qua. This is going to bend and relax, and we're going to sink, and it's almost like we're being suspended in this area. As we're suspended in this area, the hips almost pull down, tailbone pulls down, and if we have our head pulled up correctly, that's going to now extend that space that we have between the vertebrae and discs from the cervical vertebrae through the thoracic, and as we pull down, as we sink, that's going to bring that through the lumbar as well. So we want to open that space between uh, everything going on in the spine. So we have our head up, chin in, tongue behind the teeth or the roof of the mouth, shoulders over the hips. Shoulders over the hips also, again, if we're taught as we sort of are as, as dudes in America now, the shoulders back and chest out, my shoulders and hips are no longer lined up. My shoulders are behind my hips now. So again, that's going to start changing my center of gravity that I already and immediately as soon as I did this felt uprooted like I uprooted myself almost like I'm about to be thrown because all my center of gravity went up to my chest and as I do oh whew. yeah that's weird I haven't it's weird I haven't thought about it like that I haven't felt it really like that when I was able to relax my shoulders and my chest it is almost like yeah those the sometimes stuff feels like hoses like your bones almost feel like hoses and your energy is like water going through your bones as hoses I actually felt it rolling down and through my legs and into my feet when I was able to relax my shoulders and chest I felt re-rooted and re-stabilized I, I did this yeah I do this and I feel like I'm about to be thrown you know, this is the feeling that you have all of a sudden, yeah, if you're wrestling and, and someone gets you and you're about to be thrown. That's the feeling that I have from that now. So if we take our chest, let's, you know, push the chest out as much as we can and then droop as much as we can and then straighten the back and find the middle. So in early stages, this is one of the things you can do to be able to kind of find that Goldilocks zone in the middle. Go too far back, go too far forward, and then find that middle. Or if you want to find that middle, come back and then let it round out. You can do that too. So the shoulders, okay, okay this is like, so I have the anterior, mid, and posterior deltoid. That If you're going to line it up with that mid, mid part of the deltoid where it kind of points down, if we're here, it's yeah, pointing that way here, it's kind of pointing this way a little bit. So you can see, uh, it's kind of hard to do this. Let me see if this helps. I don't know if it will. Um, so you can see, actually you can see kind of the shadow where that little triangle is here with that. So if I'm standing the way it's kind of more healthy, you can see that shadow. If I puff my chest out, you can't. If I slouch too much, see how much bigger that sort of triangle here where the, the pec and the, the shoulder meet, but if it's in between, 
there's still a triangle there, but it's not really deep into the shirt. You see that. So this is the basic posture that we're going to have when we're playing our internals. Taiji, Xingyi, Bagua, Qigong, standing pose meditations or anything else like that. Um, you know, you kind of want to start, you're going to have your, your knees and your feet are going to track over, or your knees are going to track over your feet. So regardless of the um, stance, and the stances are going to be something we're going to go over too. So however the stance goes, the knees and the feet are going to be lined up. So that way we can feel, you should be able to feel your weight through the heels into the ground. Not only that, there is, you know, the, the tailbone and hips tucked in, not thrusting forward, not hinging back, Goldilocks zone in between. Um, so yeah, you can probably use the time warp to kind of figure out where that's going to be. <laughs> And I couldn't help it. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry at all. Uh, so the shoulders are going to be over the hips. Shoulders relaxed, not drooping, but there's a roundness to it. Head up, chin in. So, and again, as we talked about before, this is the collapse the chest and raise the back. Maybe something translated a little funky, but that's basically what it is. Uh, so that's, that's the, the very basic posture that we're going to do for this. Now, one of the things that's cool about long, long form yang style is we don't start when we're doing the, the preparatory into opening form. We don't start with the feet together and then step out and move into opening. That's cool for me because I hate that little thing. I, I've seen people talk about how, you know, oh, well, uh, application wise, you take a step, you know, it's kind of like, you know, um, moving out of the way of a jab or something like that. Well, there's sideways stepping when we do the uh, the wave hands postures and whatever it is. So why is that? It, it's, it's a really very superfluous move to me and I don't like it. And I think part of the reason that I don't like it as well, and I was thinking about this, about these, uh, again, because we're deconstructing. So I was kind of trying to deconstruct what it really is about it. What I my initial problem with this starting here and then stepping out and then moving into this my initial thing is it seems very superfluous to me it seems very eh. now but if we start in in here with the feet together in this with Xing Yi I don't have a problem with it we start like this with Bagua I don't have a problem with it but I do with Taiji I think again deconstructing I think part of my problem with it is with Taiji I almost have I want to feel more squared off and yeah I want to feel more squared off the Xingyi and the Bagua almost have different as much as there's similar things there's different ways to kind of move and different ways that we're thinking about how the body is going to move either it's on the circle or the line and coming through with it and they have purposes for those steps as well and a similar structure too but if I'm feeling I want to get in that Taiji mood, I want that sort of a certain amount of a squared off foundation sort of feel. And I don't have that if I'm starting Tai Chi with my feet together. A um, little bit if I toe, toe out a little bit, but they don't want that when you uh, feel that. So I think I feel like I could teeter totter somehow as opposed to feel more rooted. You know, I feel more stable here so besides uh, to, to me to me I did not create these things uh, and I'm sure the people that did like uh, Chen Wan Ting and, and other people like that had a specific purpose for that and and it and their their um, you know acumen their their internal acumen and their training and, and their everything else like that is is much more than than I'm ever gonna have I, I, there's no debate about that. I just don't like it. It's, it kind of bothers me. But I think that thinking about it, one of the things is that, yeah, it, uh, besides the superfluousness, it, it, I don't feel rooted enough. I don't feel squared off enough. 
So, and re but remember that shoulder width because we're going to have it when we most of the Taiji walking and especially when we're, and that moves bow stance to bow stance. We'll talk about that. Has it where we're going to be shoulder width squared. Again, we'll get into this with the stepping, but have that idea of your shoulder width here. But also when you step, how do you step in terms of how far you come out long and how wide you come out? And do you feel secure and rooted in those steps? Do you feel like now when you step, can you move without a whole lot of issue? You know, uh, some you know other gong fu stuff or anything. You might be big long steps like this, but you've got to really do something to be able to force yourself through. We don't want that in internals. We don't want that in yang style taiji. We want to be able to move smoothly, smoothly and fluidly, without having to now have any sort of clumsy motions, any jerky motions, or are having it where we our differentiation between yin and yang in the legs is skewed and we we don't have double weightedness again we'll talk about a lot of this later but it's it's something to think about in these early stages especially after we've just gone over posture your gait your posture as you're standing and again if you're stood there in, in a queue in a line um, or you're walking somewhere or you're even sitting pay attention to all that because all that's going to inform you as you go and what you do and how you do it and everything too. Okay, so that is basic posture uh, at the moment. Thank you for watching and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.